Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to your exceptionally great tutorial series on Java. Hands on, baby. This video, we're going to be talking about exceptions. And where do we even begin? First thing, I got to call something out. Notice I have this outline window. Discovered this today. Pretty awesome. I was looking for something like this, but I just didn't see it around. But I ended up looking up and figuring out what it was called. Basically, it's going to give us a preview of our class so we can jump to any methods, which is very nice when we're looking through some really large classes. So that's the first thing I want to show you guys. And we're going to be using this outline window to help us find different methods that might throw exceptions. So it doesn't take long in development to get your first exception. In fact, if you're really a noob, you'll probably get it pretty much right away. Your code won't work. And you'll be like, what's going on? Basically, exceptions are the technical word for runtime errors. So you're running your code and it breaks. So what I did is I created this class exceptions and it literally just has the main method, that's all. And what I wanna do is I wanna show you guys three different exceptions you might run into in attempts to just familiarize ourselves with exceptions to get the absolute basics. And then we're gonna be talking about the different types, how to work with them and so forth. So the very first one, you might have some input or some string variable, and you might try to parse this and convert it to an integer. So you might have an int and we'll just call this number and we'll assign it a value from integer dot parse. And this parse method, what it does is it takes a string and returns an integer. And when you look in here, there's this option that says throws and it says number format exception if the string does not contain a parsable integer. So it notifies us that there's a possibility it might throw an exception. So let's just try it. So we'll say parse int and then pass in a really useful message. Save, run, and check, oh, okay, there we go. Exception in thread main, and it broke. So here's your first exception possibly if you've never encountered something like this, but more than likely you have. And pretty much, it just broke. So the reason it broke is because we weren't handling this exception. So there's a common theme of exception handling throughout all of development, not just Java. And basically when something exceptional happens, meaning rare, we need to handle the situation. So there's different ways you can handle it, and we'll talk about that soon. So that's the first exception I wanted to show you. The next one is using an array list. So let's create an array list of whatever type, doesn't matter. And we're going to import array list. And I'm going to minimize this outline. We'll probably end up using that later, but for now I don't need it. And what we can do is we can say x.get and take a look at this method. It says throws index out of bounds exception. So if you ask for an index that doesn't exist, so let's say we ask for index 5. Watch this. Let's run this and we get an exception. An exception like this is very common when we're working with loops. If we're trying to iterate through all of the elements of a collection and we accidentally go one too far, we will get an exception and everything will explode and our life is over. Now there's one more exception and this one's special. So check this out. What if we say file input stream and we'll just call it F and say new file input stream. This is a class used to read from files and the constructor will take a string to say where this thing is. So I think we're gonna have to import this right there from java.io and look at this. We run this, we got a compilation error. The constructor is correct, so why are we getting an error? The reason we're getting an error is because there's this is a special type of exception. So let me show you guys this. If we just type this out, see if I can get it to pop up. There we go. Check this out. Here is what it takes. It takes a file or it takes a string. So we were passing in a string, so it should work. But there's also a throws on here, file not found exception. And this exception is special because we actually have to either deal with it or 
pass it on for someone else to deal with it. <laughs> so let me show you what I mean. We say file input stream, pass in some file name, and in order for this class to compile, we have to do one of two things. We have to add a throws declaration or surround it with try catch. The very first instinct is to just say add throws declaration. And what this does is it extends our method just a little bit and just says throws file not found exception. So basically, it is just passing on that exception if it happens to for someone else to deal with it, whoever invokes this method. We're actually in the main method, which is like the parent method of everything. So this is not going to get handled and will cause issues with our program. However, if we are in a different method, as an example, follow along here for a second. We'll just make a method do something. And in here, we're going to create a file. Paste that there. Get rid of this throws for a second. Now, since we're in a new method, we have to put the throws here. Or just generate it by hovering over the error and adding throws declaration. So, when we do this, any method that invokes this method must now deal with the exception. So we just pass it up the chain. So if we invoke this from main, we're now getting a compilation error. So the first option on here is just to pass it on to whatever method invoked the method in the first place. We're just moving the responsibility to a different method, or we can surround it with a try catch. And I'm actually gonna do that inside of this method here. So when we hover it, surround with try catch, it's gonna look something like this. So we're gonna to try to open a file, and if an exception is thrown, we're going to catch the exception right here, and then we're going to print the stack trace, which is just the sequence of methods that were invoked to cause this to happen. So that is the second option. That is dealing with the problem right now, rather than passing it on for later. So which one should you do? Well, this is kind of an art here, so I don't think there's an issue with either one. If you know how to deal with an exception and you can fix the problem, do it right away. If you're not sure how to fix it, then pass it on to the calling method and have them deal with it. So we'll probably come back and talk about this some more, but first I want to take a look at these different types of exceptions and figure out why this file not found exception is different and requires us to do the extra step of either catching it or saying that this method throws an exception. So let's take a look at the documentation and take a look at the inheritance hierarchy for these exceptions. So here is the file not found exception. It inherits from IO exception, which comes from exception. Now let's take a look at the other two. This number format exception inherits from illegal argument exception, which comes from runtime exception. Same thing for index out of bounds, comes from runtime exception. So the methods that come from runtime exception, such as this number format exception and number out of bounds exception, these are known as unchecked exceptions. They are not checked by the compiler and it's ultimately up to you to deal with them and make sure people know that they could be thrown. Thrown, sorry, <laughs> English. This file not found exception is different. It does not inherit from that. And this is an example of a checked exception. Any checked exceptions have to be listed in the throws part of creating a method or with a try catch. So that's your introduction to exceptions. So we talked about the two different types, checked and unchecked. And again, just to repeat myself, just to make sure you guys got it, checked exceptions have to be caught using try catch or you have to say throws and put the type of exception right here in this situation file not found exception and then we can get rid of the, the try catch if we want to understand this further why we don't have to do this throws for certain ones imagine if we had code here and it got information from an array list and for this throws here we said throws index out of bounds exception. Although this is valid and there's no syntax errors, we're clearly stating that it could throw this exception. It's not required to be listed as a throws in any calling methods or it's not required to be caught 
because an index out of bounds exception is a programming error. It's an issue on your part, it's your fault. Whereas a file not found exception is dependent on the environment in which the application is executed on. So it's out of your control. So I kind of think of it as the exceptions that are 100% your fault, those can be prevented if you program correctly and you don't have to list them in the throws section. Any of them that are out of your control, such as a file not found, those need to be listed in the throws section. All right, enough rambling here. I'm a peace out. I'll see you guys in the next video. I think we're gonna talk about exceptions more because there was some stuff I wanted to talk about which we didn't get to.